Hello, can you hear me? Hi there. Assalamu alaikum. Good to, to be here and to welcome you all to this special meeting tonight. I'm uh, Shona Robinson, I'm the Member of the Scottish Parliament for Dundee City East. Also, I'm the, the Cabinet Secretary for Commonwealth Games, Sport, Pensioners' Rights and Equalities. Um, and uh, I am going to just say a few words of introduction and then I'm going to introduce uh, our speakers. But let me tell, me who, tell you who we've got here tonight. Um, who I'm sure both of you will um, know uh, these guys. Um, Amar Anwar, who is a human rights lawyer. And uh, Amar and I have known each other for quite a few years, probably when we both had uh, less wrinkles, I have to say. And, uh, uh, oh, oh, and, and so modest, so modest. Um, but it's fair to say that uh, I have uh, seen Amar uh, grow in... Uh, stature over the years. Um, he is a guy who has has uh, taken up so many really crucial causes, has fought hard on behalf of people and just one thing to say, we were talking earlier on about how pleased I was to hear that the, the choker case was going to be uh, reopened and prosecuted again, which is fantastic news for, for the family and uh, hopefully we'll see justice done. It's been a long time coming but it's uh, better better uh, late than never at all, so it's really good news for the family. Uh, and then we have uh, Sohil Hack, who is from uh, Labour for Independence. And the important thing about that is that you know the Yes campaign is not about the SNP, it's not about Alex Salmond, it's about Scotland, it's about you, it's about B, it's about our kids, it's about our families, it's about the kind of country that we want to see. Uh, and the support for Yes has been across uh, all of the parties. There are people with all, all, within all of the political parties and within no parties that have come together to say we believe that a vote for, for yes on the 18th of September is the best for our country. And I think that's the strength of the yes campaign, not even just about politicians. Um, when you see some of the grassroots movements, uh, artists, musicians, people coming together and saying we can see a better future uh, with, with a yes vote, and I think that's the strength of the, the campaign. And then, of course, last but no means least, we have uh, Hamza Yusuf, who is a member of the Scottish Parliament in Glasgow. Many of you will know him, and of course, he's Minister in the Scottish Government for uh, External Affairs. And again, uh, I can say some fantastic things about Hamza, but he won't be able to get his head out of the door if I do that. But suffice to say, he is absolutely one of the hardest working ministers in the Scottish Government and a great asset, not just to the Scottish Government, but to, to Scotland. Uh, as well. And I suppose the last thing for me is more of a, a personal thing and that is, you know, we live in a very rich country in Scotland but not everybody shares in that wealth and we have the opportunity with independence to create a fairer society. So for our kids and our grandkids, that's about the opportunities for them uh, to have jobs, to uh, not have to leave Scotland if they don't want to, that they can stay here and, uh, and live here and work here and help to build uh, a better society. And we have too many people living in poverty in a rich country. And that is a disgrace when you think about the, the revenues that come out of the North Sea, the richness that uh, and all the revenues that are raised here in Scotland. But unfortunately, because we can't decide the, so many of those decisions, we have too many people living in poverty. And that's something fundamentally I want to see changed with uh, independence. And also, the type of country we want Scotland to be. I think on the world stage, Scotland will be a country that takes its rightful place on the world stage, but as a force for peace. And, um, you know, when you think about... The, 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 the shame, actually, that many of us felt being part of a, an illegal war that uh, people didn't want, didn't vote for, and yet we were dragged into. I never want to see Scotland being part of something like that again. But unless we control our own destiny, then we're going to be pulled into further situations like that that none of, none of us support. So there's a lot of reasons for independence. Um, and uh, I'm sure we'll hear some more of those tonight. So without further ado, I will pass on to Amar Anwar. Uh, Amar, um, I'm going to keep you to just about, just over five minutes? Between yeah, five and ten. <laughs> Seven and a half. Yeah. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, 
Sean for, for that introduction and I'm proud of the role incidentally that Sean and played along with a number of others uh, whose faces we see every day now from, from the Scottish Cabinet who worked also day and night alongside ourselves um, with the Trophy campaign to get justice and I do hope for the sake of the family and for the sake of people in Scotland that we do get justice. Now on the question of independence I say this at each meeting, I don't have a crystal ball, I don't think any politician, I don't think any lawyer has a crystal ball to determine what will happen in Scotland post September 18, but why is, the reason I am convinced is that at least in an independent Scotland I believe that we will not spend our lives being ashamed of the mistakes that have been made by Westminster and repeatedly made by Westminster. Better together of course tells us that we should think that we're all better together in a, in a union. Um, and I wonder what, who are they talking about when they say we're all better together. The richest 1,000 people saw their wealth increase from £99 billion to £301 billion in nine years that Tony Blair and Gordon Brown wore around the government. In 2010, two years after the banking crisis, chief executives in this country had their pay in the UK increased by 49% according to the European Banking Report. Many in Scotland, the wealthiest, are 273 times more richer than the poorest in this country, according to Oxfam. And many British tycoons pay little or no tax at all, and their tax board, corporate tax board, <coughs> costs the United Kingdom taxpayers £70 billion pounds annually. And you compare that to benefit fraud, which is £1 billion pounds a year. And we don't see any of these fly the wall documentaries, we don't see any of these camera crews following people on, you know, um, these corporate um, benefit frauds, as far as I'm concerned, these people in their yachts, people controlling places like Grangemouth, um, controlling the life and destiny of individuals sitting on the Mediterranean on a yacht, deciding what will happen to thousands of individuals in Scotland. Now, research shows that Scotland, um, poverty is worse than it's been in 30 years. As of last year, 14% of Scots, that's 720,000 people, live in a state of basic deprivation. Yet out of those 720,000 people, 40% of those in poverty are actually in work. And 100,000 Glaswegians use payday loans to meet everyday living expenses. And if you look at the city of Glasgow, it has six out of 10 of the most deprived areas in the United Kingdom where some 51% of our children are living in poverty, our elderly in Scotland are the fourth poorest in Europe, and life expectancy for males in parts of Scotland is the worst in Western Europe. Now it's all very well that Labour's promising us, if you vote for us, vote against independence, we're better together and things will be better the next time round. It's all manana, manana. We should not forget the number of years that Tony Blair and Gordon Brown were in power and the opportunities they had to de deliver welfare, or the opportunities they had to deliver justice and to deliver healthcare, etc., to the rest of the United Kingdom. And it's astonishing that the London School of Economics, hardly a radical left-wing think tank, has actually said if we carry on with austerity, with what has been promised to us by each member of those political parties that are backing better together, that we will reach Victorian levels of inequality by 2025. Scots have been told that the, the sky will cave down on us, there'll be, uh, you know, the world may well end if we vote for independence, we'll lose the pound, we'll be stripped of everything from the BBC to the European Union membership, there'll be border posts, immigration control, um, and Osborne of course is the most Bullington of um, the Tory ministers is threatening to build a financial Hadrian's Wall to stop pounds leaking into Scotland. And I have to say this, they totally expose themselves because the United Kingdom isn't a union of equals if one side lays exclusive claim to the most obvious symbol of that union, which is the pound. And unionists actually claiming that they will that we will not get the power, the currency union are willing to do damage to England and to hundreds of thousands of workers with England. And when you see Gordon Brown wheeled out again, that political beast, I don't know why they call him the political beast, because as far as I'm concerned, Gordon Brown is a failure. He helped destroy this country. And when he has a cheek a few years, a few weeks ago, to talk about the UK state pension, almost as though it's a gold standard in this country, compare it with most of the other developed companies, economies, it isn't. Um, it's actually ranked alongside Chile at C. Plus. The Republic of Ireland's state pension, the basic state pension, is £180 a week. 
In the UK, we have the worst state pension in Europe, and it's at 113 pounds and 10 pence. So 180 pounds in Ireland, but 113 pounds, and this is this is what Gordon Brown appeals to us for. And it could have been different. There's been lots of talk about us um, imitating Norway, imitating Scandinavia. In Norway, they had the biggest sovereign oil wealth in the world. The annual income from their protected investments pays their state pensions and will do so for years to come. And the reason why is because Norway invested their oil. They invested their oil and the United Kingdom never did. Our oil wealth continued went to the Westminster and to those companies and those financiers and those bankers and the southeast of England in order to carry on with their greed. And when you consider the fact, somebody pointed this out to me a BBC documentary, that we have the equivalent amount of oil to Kuwait. And look at the living standards of ordinary Kuwaitis in comparison to the living standards of the, the Scots. And it's clear to me why we do need to vote yes when it comes to September the 18th. There is no Labour escape room. There is no talk of social justice one day or next time because that's all it is. It's actually talk. A Labour majority would be required to guarantee the added powers for Scotland. And if you had a minority in Westminster, then that will leave them at the mercy of Little Englanders. And when I'm talking about Little Englanders, I'm talking about the Tory party and I'm talking about you. Okay. It is terrifying to consider the advert that was on TV just last week, Britain First, the fact that they can get away with it, that it's normality now for a party political broadcast to spend four minutes of its time where every 20 seconds is an attack on the Muslim community. I just remember it was several years ago when the BNP were allowed on to question time the first time how there was national uproar. It, it carried on every front page of every newspaper. There was practically riots and people were demanding that there should be no platform. But yet now it seems all right for UKIP and for Britain First to be able to say that. And we should remember who is responsible for that. Tony Blair, Gordon Brown. It was Gordon Brown that raised the slogan, British jobs for British workers. And he's the one who energized the drive for UKIP and drive for the, the new parties, the fascists, right wing, racists, whatever you want to call them. But we have to be able to stop them. For those who seem to think that we will be able to stop them by remaining within the United Kingdom. For those worried about the European Union, I think we have more chance of staying within the European Union if we vote for independence than we have if we remain within the United Kingdom, considering what may well happen at the course of this week with UKIP and their party results. And incidentally, when you come to vote, make sure you vote on the 22nd. Make sure you vote for those candidates, and I'll put, I'll put my hand up here to Smeen Armand Sheikh to make sure that the third candidate that comes in is an SNP candidate. I'm not a member of the SNP, I'm not a member of any political party, but I will be voting for Smeen because simply I think she's a great candidate, but I also want to make sure that UK does not get the respectability it craves, but also that they're humiliated in the polls in Scotland so that we can differentiate itself. And I'll say this, I'm sick of general elections. Every five years, the bookies will always speculate on who's going to win the general election. Well, in Scotland, it's always clear who the losers will be. It's the pensioners. It's the sick. It's the poor. It's the unemployed. Every five years. We didn't elect a Tory government. But no matter what, with one Tory MP in Scotland, Westminster will dictate our future. And that's what we want to put an end to, that the people of Scotland themselves will decide. And when it comes to the message of Better Together, Labour, Tories, mini-me Tories, married to each other for better or worse, they only have one message. It's cuts, it's more weapons, it's more misery, and they're willing to hand £1.4 trillion to the bankers, but they tell us we have to pay through closed hospitals, through um, slash living standards and a future of unemployment, or a future of working till the day we die. People have had absolutely enough, and I'll go back to the question of Gordon Brown, because for some reason they're, they're desperate to find these political beasts to be bought out of retirement to try and convince us on why we should vote for the State of the Union. We should remember that when Gordon Brown claims that a vote for independence will put at risk 100 years of Labour achievements during a decade of annual CBI dinners when he was a Chancellor of the Exchequer, he actually said he'd stabilise the world economy. And we should remember that he was the one who signed the blank cheques for Iraq, for the wars in Iraq and the wars in Afghanistan. He was the one who was messianic in his pursuit of privatisation and said that he had to break from 100 years of Labour history to turn the UK into a paradise for big business. It was Gordon Brown that actually out Thatcher, Thatcher, not David Cameron, but Gordon Brown that set that road up um, that we've seen where London has been turned into a playground and a paradise for the super rich and leaving us at the mercy of the bankers. Um, and it was Gordon that bailed out the bankers with 1.4 trillion pounds of our money. He's the one who refused to slash 
um, the bankers' living standards, and the UK is becoming one of the most unequal countries in Western Europe, where we're dominated by the arm trade and we're dominated by what the banks do. And I'll say this, in an independent Scotland, what I want to see is where banks do not have the freedom to speculate on our future. As far as I'm concerned, if bankers fail, they should be jailed, not bailed out as they were done. the life of BC when somebody gets away with trillions of pounds of fraud and gambling and speculating on our future, how it is they end up with nightmares? How it is they end up back in business again a year in, year out later? And I'll say this, it was only last year that the European Union suggested that there should be a cap on bankers' bonuses. And what they said, it shouldn't be, it wasn't anything revolutionary. It certainly wasn't anything revolutionary. What it said was the bankers' bonuses shouldn't be more than their annual wage or it shouldn't be more than a million pounds. More than a million pounds. What did David Cameron do? He said he was willing to go to war with the European Union and call the meeting with all the commissioners to say, absolutely not, we will stand against it so the plants can disappear. Now, this is a man who's willing to go to war with the European Unions to make sure there isn't a cap on bankers' bonuses of more than a million pounds. Yet he's willing to slash benefits, he's willing to slash the welfare state, he's willing to scapegoat the Romanians and the Bulgarians and anybody else that stands in their way in this country so that they can actually make more money. And that is exactly why we have to vote for independence, because I do not want to live in a society. I was not being a... One minute, seriously. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll say, I'll, I'll start to finish it off so that Sean doesn't have to give me another one. Um, but I'll say that I think the no campaign have to be the most miserable, negative, depressing, boring campaign in the history of politics within this country. They are not just out of touch with the people of Scotland, but they're also losing touch with reality. When you have Lord Robertson, who was once the NATO Secretary General, the US, the UK's defense, sorry, mis misstated, I said US Defense Secretary, actually it's UK, but I don't know much difference between that. But when he said a yes vote would be cataclysmic event, destabilizing the world, in his words, he said, what could justify giving dictators, the persecutors, the oppressors, and adventurers across the planet the biggest pre-Christmas present for their, of their lives by tearing the United Kingdom apart. He said it would unleash the forces of darkness. I don't know about you, but as far as I'm concerned, I no longer believe in flying the British flag, in, in alluding to British and imperial grandeur, and wanting to foxtrot around the planet in tune with the United States and showing the double standards that we have when it comes to the question of Palestine, when it comes to the question of the Middle East, when it comes to the question of... Simple, basic liberties. And I'll finally I'll say is that there is one cast iron guarantee, and I started off saying I didn't have a crystal ball. But if we do vote for independence come September the 18th, the people who live in Scotland will finally be able to make the decisions that affect Scotland. Westminster will no longer have the right to dictate what we should think, what we should create, what we should produce. We will no longer be told that we cannot govern ourselves. From warfare to welfare, from employment to foreign policy, we will have the right to decide our destiny. I want to live in a nuclear-free Scotland. I want Scotland that stands as a beacon for human rights around the world. And I no longer want to back illegal wars like Iraq because we are told to do so. As far as I'm concerned, I am a backer of independence. I am proud to be a Muslim. And I no longer partake in being proud to be a member of that so-called British culture that the Tories or the Labour Party tell me to do so. My parents sweated blood and tears in order to help build this country. Our families live, work and walk within the same communities and there's just as much a, a, a threat of being blown up by terrorist attacks. But we need to change the system in this country if we want a future for our children. We want an ending of poverty, we want an ending of racism, we want an ending of ignorance and inequality of opportunity. And I do not, I'm not one of those that believes September the 18th that's all going to happen. But it'll be a starting point. Because for the very first time, we'll have a destiny within our own hands and be able to dictate what we want to happen according to the needs of the people of Scotland. Thank you.